Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. Welcome to part two of how to draw a paper piece pattern in Photoshop. We're going to pick up right where we left off in part one. All the lines are drawn. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to number. I like to use a 30 point font and we're going we're gonna to le use letters to label the back units. So you have A, B, and C as I mentioned in the first video. And I'm going to go ahead and merge those into one layer in case I need to erase something or move anything. And I'm going to change to a 10 point font. I just use um, Arial. It's a, a nice simple font. And then we're just going to start numbering. One, two, three, four. We're numbering in order of how these will be stitched. So one is the first piece of uh, fabric and then two is the next piece of fabric, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, We're going to keep going with B. I'm sorry this is going so fast. This is actual time. This is how fast they label. Um, so we've got um, B numbering up to um, up to the corner here and those that's real simple to stitch. You start at one end and you go all the way across. And now on C we're going to do the same exact thing and um, we're going to go across and then we have the the large corner piece which will be the last um, number on our list. So we'll just keep going across, get these last couple of numbers in here and our last number here and then we will um, go ahead and after I've, I've uh, done all of my numbering what I like to do is just if everything's right I go ahead and merge the whole thing, save it and then I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge the background so that I can manipulate it. From this point on everything else is optional. I like to add seam allowances to all of the pieces of my patterns. This is not necessary not everyone likes to have seam allowances on all their pattern pieces. I do. I find that um, it just makes me more comfortable when I'm sewing to have a completed pattern piece for every unit. So I always add seam allowances and this is how I do that. So with this I went to, um, we, we selected and now we're moving this A piece and now we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select here and we're going to transform the selection sideways if you can at this point if you hit transform selection you can go under edit and you can skew just the selection box so you can make it whatever size and shape you like I did that on the A piece um, on this one since it's just a corner piece and there isn't anything else in the way um, I'm j I just transformed it turned it and as soon as I get it lined up we will um, slide it across and move that C piece away from that D piece so here we're going to move it, we're going to um, slide that unit down and now those are separated. I'm going to use the line tool, I'm going to use the same gray color that's on, already on the um, outside borders and then what I'm going to do is the seam allowance is going to be 0.25 inches wide. This is just a quarter inch seam allowance like you'd have on any quilt block. Um, I'm going to do that on every unit so that we have this and I may have to play with it a little, a little bit, move it down, move it back. Um, you notice that the pieces are a little bit too long. I'll actually go back and um, delete the ends of those lines so that they are the correct length. So it's this part's real easy. Um, the more complicated the pattern, the longer this takes, but I prefer my patterns like this so I always, always add seam allowance. Um, the gray I use because it's really easy to manipulate um, into a quarter inch line and that's that's the only reason I do it that way is it's I can make very easily make a quarter inch line with Photoshop. Now I'm going to merge those gray lines so that I can erase what I don't need without doing any kind of damage whatsoever to the actual block pattern. So now I'm just deleting those little corners. I'm selecting and deleting so I get a nice straight line on the edge. Um, We'll do that on every single um, little dog ear there and that'll that'll clean up those corners so that they look nice. And there's not a huge amount of method involved here, just make sure that there's a quarter inch all the way around. Um, it's just practice and lining up the um, selection box and this is actually one of the easiest parts to do because you're just erasing. So now that those are all erased, um, we go ahead and go back to our line tool. I like to add a blue line on inside seams. This is also something that's unique to me. I do this because I choose to do it. You don't have to do it. You can use a black line. You don't have to use a line at all. But I think it looks nice and I also like to um, I like to distinguish the inside seams. 
So if you see a blue line on one of my patterns, you know that's an inside seam. It's always going to be an inside seam because that blue line indicates that it's not an outside seam. Um, so you know that, that that is going to go from one unit to another, and that's going to be your stitching line for um, piecing these individual units together. So we get those blue lines in place. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the whole thing. Um, and I'm going to tweak it a little bit. I like to move the pieces back together now that they're all manipulated and I have all the seam allowance that I want. Um, I do this only for printing purposes. I try to keep my patterns seven inches wide. Um, that's uh, mostly because international paper sizes are slightly smaller. They're less narrow than uh, U.S. paper sizes. And since I do have a number of, of friends in other countries that also are paper piecers, I like to try to make their life as easy as possible by making it uh, making the patterns as narrow as I can so they're easier to print. Um, again, just a personal preference. As long as you can print it, it's not a problem. Um, this is a I'm working on a 10 inch by 10 inch um, screen right now. So what I'm going to do is um, what I'm doing now is I'm typing in the um, the name of the pattern, which I'm calling it Patchy Heart. And the sewing order is going to be A to B to C. I always like to add sewing order even on something as simple as this because sometimes the patterns are much more complicated. If you've got sewing order, you're good to go. Um, I have a copyright that I put on all of my patterns. I, it's an image to itself, as you can see, and I just open it, copy it, and paste it right in. So it's the same on all of my patterns. Now we're just going to crop this down so that it's um, as small as I can make it so that it's easier to print. And we're going to do that. It's we're going to save. Oh, we got to we got to flatten first. So we merged all the layers. We're going to save, and that's going to be the end of this tutorial. This is part two of two of how to draw a paper piece block in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.